The common feature I can see between what was happening in 1989 in Prague, uh, people gathering on Wenceslas Square every evening uh, until basically the old regime decided to call it a day, uh, and or in Berlin in front of the uh, Berlin Wall, and what is happening today all over the place from, from Chile to, to, to Beirut is people in the streets uh, with an aspiration for change, but an aspiration which is vague. It's an aspiration to freedom, but that can go in many directions. And that is, I think, the, uh, perhaps the one common feature, the unpredictability of the outcome. In those days, that was the case as well. The unpredictability of history is a great lesson of 1989. Something that seems set has been there for years, and suddenly it can, within days, within weeks, it can disintegrate. And that's a great lesson. I think that's a common feature with what is happening today. There's a feeling that there are some regimes, some situations that are simply no longer viable, that there are great aspirations for change, but nobody knows which way it is going to turn out. One thing is to say, oh, there is unpredictability of history, and there is aspiration for freedom or change, etc. Another thing is, well, what do you do with your freedom once you've gained it? And that's the big question after 1989. In fact, this is, this is why it's worth debating it today, because it's uh, sort of 30 years after you can, have a, you can have an assessment of that. Think for yourself, try to see what are the fundamentals that the movement in a particular country stands for. Don't just try to imitate what exists elsewhere. Because, of course, there is a similarity of the movements, people in the streets, they want change, they want democracy. But then, once you have that freedom, what happened after 1989, if that is my view, is perhaps too quickly, we have abandoned some of the key ideas of the dissident movements that was actually the bearer of that freedom, or at least the most articulate spokesman of that freedom. So, yeah, suddenly they were propelled to power, but they were very soon eclipsed from power. And what happened then? Well, what do you do? You imitate something that you think is working elsewhere. And uh, you may imitate it well or poorly, but you're basically in imitation mode. And I would, if I have to say, for, for my money, imitation has two problems. One is, if you imitate, you cease to be interesting for others. Because if you're imitating me, <laughs> why should I be so interested in what you have to say? And secondly, is, what if you're imitating a model that is itself in crisis? So <laughs> you then reproduce the crisis of that model. So I would say the lesson of 1989, you know, think for yourself. Each movement has to reinvent its own ways, its own forms of democracy, uh, its own forms of change that is adaptable uh, to the particular circumstances, and perhaps come up with something different, something new. Uh, uh, we cannot simply replicate a model that is now pretty much exhausted, very tired elsewhere. An important driver of those changes uh, are the students, are the young people. That was the case in 1989 in Prague. It started with a student demo on the 17th of November. Okay, th that, that's a start. And that's very often the case as well. You, you look in Beirut, etc. There, there are, you know, the, the university kids are, are the first one in the streets. Uh, so, yes, there is then, they are very good at uh, articulating the demand for change. Uh, they haven't been as good, I would say, after in delivering the politics of change. They haven't gone into politics, or very rarely. So the question is, you know, will these new movements that are occurring elsewhere, will they produce a new kind of politics, new forms of political engagement, new kind of political thinking, and new political leadership?
That has not happened in 1989 in Eastern Europe uh, with the young students. They were out. And I remember Václav Havel saying, each time we were grumbling about how the situation is uh, uh, not going the way he was expecting, he would say, oh yeah, but there will be the young generation. They will, they will see it differently and they will make sure it works. Well, we're still waiting. <laughs>